This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. And today we have a very important guest and a very important subject. And the subject is one of my favorite subjects. That's gold and silver, what I call God's money. And this is a very important program. Uh, but I want to say thank you first to our guest. His name is Kevin DeMeritt. And he's made me a famous man. I never thanked him. So I want to thank him publicly. Because Kim and I were just in Park City, Utah. I mean, just yesterday or day before yesterday. And they still have to wear masks. And the only thing they recognize are my blue glasses. <laughs> and if I just, I realized if I hadn't worn my blue glasses on the Lair Capital show on Fox News, you know, people, oh, the blue glasses, the blue glasses. But without my blue glasses, nobody recognized me to be another guy with a mask on. Wasn't that amazing? Kid? <laughs> I've never seen so many people come up to you in two days. Because <laughs> I had blue glasses on. I've seen you on TV. I've seen you on TV. Oh, my gosh. I read your book. I, I loved it. You changed my life. Not nonstop for two days. Yeah, so I want to cool. thank Kevin for making me a famous man with a mask on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Robert, I think, uh, I, I think you became famous from uh, your books more than I made you famous, but thank you very much for, <laughs> for the compliment. You know, when I, when I walk around here, nobody knows me in Phoenix, but I, I went to park city and that's where all the rich guys are. They go, Oh, I know you. Cause we watch Fox. <laughs> <laughs> you're on the silver show. You, you talk about Lear capital in and all this stuff. So anyway, it's the power of what you do. And I, I appreciate the push. And Kevin, Kevin Demerit is the founder and operator of one of the largest precious metals firms in the U.S., Lear Capital. And we've been working with him for about eight years now. I mean, it's been a fantastic relationship. And, and what, what I like about the show today, what, what we're going to talk about is, is Kevin is the expert and kind of the behind the scenes, because there's a lot of, lot of information mis out mis there, misinformation too. about gold, silver. Um, so we're going to get the straight scoop from Kevin today. And I think that's really, really important because we are the, we, we do our best to bring the, the real news, not the fake news. So let me go to the, the, my, my background this real quickly. Is in 1964, I started saving silver. And the reason was in 64, there was a, the, 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 the dimes came out with copper around them. There was a copper tinge. And then the quarters had this copper tinge. And then the half dollar had a copper tinge. And that's Gresham's law. And Gresham's law states that when fake, when bad money enters the system, good money goes into hiding. That's one of the most important things you can get from this show and why you should listen to Kevin. Gresham's law is when bad money enters the system, good money goes into hiding. So in 1964, I'm like 16 years old. I'm looking at this little dime, not silver anymore, it's copper. I'm going, there's something wrong here. And what's intuitive? Nobody told me about Gresham's Law. You know, my, my teacher did never talked about it. They still don't talk about it in school. But the money went into hiding. So when I'm on Kevin's program, Lair Capital, and I'm always saying, buy silver, buy silver. I'm not a Johnny come lately. Since 1964, I've been saving silver. And it's not high intelligence. You don't have to go to stock trading school or real estate school. You just keep getting real silver. And we got tons of it now. And there's a lot of confusion on it. And that's why I wanted to have Kevin talk about it. Not just silver, but gold. And then we have fake gold, fake silver. We have paper gold, fake gold. You know, all this stuff's going on. So that's why we have Kevin DeMerit on this program, getting us Lair Capital. He made me a famous man with my blue glasses recommending <laughs> silver on Fox News. And so we really, really want to thank you for the relationship there, Kevin. You guys have been great for us. Yeah, you as well. It's been it's been a great ride, and I appreciate it. What's your background, really quickly? Because you come, you're you're too young to be around in 1964. So anyway, what, what happened? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, born in '65, so <laughs> 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 one, one year after they took all the silver out of the out of the coinage. Um, you know, went to school to be a minor in economics, a major in finance. Uh, immediately. I uh, came to California, I uh, got a job as an international banker. So we were putting banks together for uh, large corporations, import exportation, things like that. And in that field, you'll learn a lot about uh, currency because you're having to hedge the currencies um, and gold and silver being one of them. If you want to capitalize a bank with gold and silver, it actually made it a lot easier than capitalizing it with uh, currency because I could hedge 
one thing as opposed to trying to hedge against uh, two different types of currencies. Yeah, can, we, can we say that Car- currency is like the peso, the yen, the euro, and the dollar, right? Yeah. At, okay. at that time, we were, you know, we didn't even have the euro. It was uh, right. the lira right. and, uh, you know, everything you had in Europe. Uh, so it made it even more difficult. Um, and I, I, I worked there for a few years and then was recruited to a precious metals company uh, here in California. They'd been in business for about 20 years and really learned the ropes uh, from a gentleman there. Um, was there for, I don't know, three and a half, four years. Went back to banking for about nine months and said, you know, I really love the gold and silver market. I want to move back over. It, it felt so great to put something physical and real in someone's hands. It was easy to buy, easy to sell, had never been worth zero in its 5,000 year history at the time. And, and, you know, that was a pretty good uh, investment to me if you wanted to be conservative and, and, and accumulate some wealth. Like, you know, a, a dime in 1964 was 10 cents. Today it's $2. You know what I mean? Right. If you think about that, the technical yesterday was $1.94. So that's how much the dime has gone down. Is now ninety four? I think I think a half dollar is nine bucks or something. Or you know, I mean, that's how much fake money has invaded our system. Again, that's Gresham's law: bad money drives out good money. And when I was sixteen years old, I started saving this stuff. And then in nineteen seventy two, I flew behind enemy lines in Vietnam to buy gold. And then back in seventy two, it was illegal for Americans to own gold. So that's why it's, I'm not just on Lear Capital, Kevin's company. I mean, he doesn't even pay me. I'm just I'm just famous for my blue glasses. <laughs> but I re- but I remember I remember that time when when the dimes and the and the quarters changed. And I was I was only seven years old, but even I knew something because I would go through all of my parents' change and I'd pick out the the silver ones. I'd pick them out, and I still today have them in a little box. Um, and how did I know that? I'm seven years old. What? Why would I even know that that, w- that it's different? And that's a very important point because you look at world history. Hitler came to power because of Gre- he violated Gresham's law. Not he did, but the Germans violated it. Right. Zimbabwe went down because Mugabe violated Gresham's law. Venezuela is in trouble right now because they violated Gresham's law. Yeah, and look at what happened when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard in 1971. Again, he violated Gresham's law. So most of our problems today go back to Gresham's law when bad money drives out good money. And that's why Lair Capital, I mean, when I speak for you guys, it's from the heart. <laughs> it's, I really I appreciate it. Stuff. You know, the, 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 the funny uh, comic strip in Germany was – the guy who goes into the store to buy, uh, you know, a product with a wheelbarrow full of money and he parked it outside. And when he came out, the wheelbarrow was gone and all the money was still there. <laughs> you know, it, the value of the dollar it, had crumbled. And like you said, this has been happening all the way through history. history. You know, uh, something unique that I think people uh, get a kick out of is the reeds around a quarter, the little reeds that are on the outside of the quarter. And, you know, people always think they're there so you can hold the coin. No. It's untrue. Back in uh, Roman times, the Roman days, yep. they would take a very sharp knife or something and they would just scrape off a little bit of the gold coin yep. and it kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller, which is basically exactly what you're talking about yep. with, with Gresham's Law, right? And, and finally, they made the coin smaller, but those reeds were put on the outside of the coin to prohibit people from scraping the gold off the side. You could see the reeds were gone. So, you know, this has been going on a long time with people and governments devaluing the dollar right. or their dollar. And, and the reason I wanted Kevin on is because I'm such an old guy, you know, I don't trust anything that's paper. Do, do you know what I mean? And, and today, this is a rumor, and that's why I wanted Kevin to kind of clear it up. The rumor is the reason I say I buy gold and silver, and but I take delivery of it. I mean, it's mine, and it's it's in safes all over the world. I don't trust any. I don't trust the government, but our our gold and silver is in safes that we we control. So when I see people buying SLV or GLD, which are ETFs, I call it paper gold and paper silver, and I'm in. The market pretty tight, but I'm not behind the scenes like Kevin is. The rumors I hear 
that for every gold or every silver piece, because I love silver the most, for every piece of silver, there's actually 500 pieces of paper saying they own that silver. You know what I mean? So there's 500 claims or derivatives against that one silver coin. Now, the reason I, I want you know, Kevin to come on Rich Dad Capital, he's an insider. He's been in the business. He knows what it is. So, Kevin, what is the truth? How much, what's the difference between a paper ETF silver, paper ETF gold, and the physical? And, and ETF stands for Exchange Traded, Traded fund. fund. So, it's right. a fund. Yes. So, uh, SLV, Exchange Traded Fund, usually holds silver derivative contracts that are backed by the silver, right? So, <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I thought supposedly. you would say. I can, yeah, you're, that's you're, a theory. You're talk, hey, Kevin, you're talking to a marine. That went over my head so fast. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so when they say that uh, these are backed by physical silver, they're trying to convince you that the Comex has enough silver to back all of the contracts, which if you added up all the contracts, you don't need to be a mathematician. You can quickly find that this is a highly leveraged speculative uh, type of the field, but it will go up and down with the price of the silver. So what the exchange traded funds do is they'll take some portion and each one of them are a little bit different. It could be 20% in physical silver and the rest in derivative contracts, just a piece of paper saying that I can go get this silver at some point, or I'm going to match the price, one or the other. And, um, and, and Kevin, they're they're betting they're betting that nobody's going to go and collect the silver, right? Because if everybody went to collect the silver, it wouldn't be there, correct? Well, yeah. In the exchange traded fund, I don't even know if they're betting that anybody would collect the silver because if you read. The fine print, it says you can take uh, in-kind um, distribution. Well, in-kind would be a stock. So I'm going to have my silver stock that's backed by these derivatives and a little bit of physical gold, and I'm going to give you another stock uh, as, as, as payment if something went wrong and you wanted the physical stuff. You, you will never get the physical uh, inventory out of one of the exchange traded funds. There's it's not enough in there to do it. Yeah. In kind comes from the German word kinder baby. And so what it means here is this, you go and they say, I gave you a hundred dollars and he said, can I have a hundred dollars in silver? So no, we'll give you a hundred dollars back. Right. You know, they, they just give you back more paper. Correct. So people get confused with that in kind thinking they're going to get silver. No, you purchased a paper stock and you will get paper stock back, not it's called, it's called toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. And, and, the, and the worst part, uh, Robert, about these exchange traded funds to me, I, I give people these two examples. So if you were a customer and came to me and said, I want to purchase an ounce of gold. And I said, okay, great. I'm going to purchase this ounce of gold. However, I'm going to send it off to HSBC Bank in, in Europe, and we're going to keep it in safe storage for you. And you said, no, I want to hold it. No, I'm going to ship it off somewhere else to you. So not only do you have a paper problem, you could have a location problem. If something happens in one of the countries where these exchange-traded funds, physical, whatever they have in physical is stored, I don't know how I'm going to get that back either. But then add on another layer and say, not only am I going to ship it off to a different country, I'm going to buy, let's say, half of your physical gold, and I'm just going to give you a piece of paper that represents the other half. If anybody thought about it that way, would anybody buy an exchange traded fund at all? And I doubt it. But people just like to see the up and down in the price and say, I'm going to take advantage of that, not thinking it all the way through, in my opinion. Yeah, and what Kevin's talking about, that's another way they manipulate the price, you know, the actual physical price of the gold or silver. So that's why you see the price going up and down. Just recently, we had the Reddit stock try to attack the uh, silver market, like they, attract, they attacked GameStock. And GameStock is phony as, <laughs> GameStock is more phony than the Comex. But anyway, <laughs> there's so much phoniness going on. That's why I have, you know, Kevin McDermott here from Lear Capital, because he's going to clear this up 
But I just want you to know that Kim and I are for real. We, we actually do own physical gold and silver. It's hidden in different vaults throughout the world because we don't trust confiscation, you know, from 1933 when they took it. But that's how much we are. I really do not trust the U.S. government, or nor do I trust Wall Street. And we're going to go into what you can do when we come back, because I think J.P. Morgan was just fined for playing games with gold and silver. That's right. So that's why Kevin, Kevin McDermott is from Lear Capital. He's the guy we speak for. And we've got to get educated. We're not saying don't buy ETFs. We're saying just know what you're buying. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Chat Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. We have a very special guest, Kevin Demerit. He's of Lair Capital. He's made me a famous man because in the time of masks, the only thing they recognize are my blue glasses. And Kim and I were just up in Park City the other day, and everybody recognized my blue glasses because we're wearing masks. But anyway, we're talking about a very important subject here. It's about physical gold and silver versus fake gold and silver. So it's a very important program, Kim. Yes, so um, Kevin is the founder and operator of one of the largest precious metal firms, Lear Capital. And here's a question I have for you, Kevin, is, is what's happening with the price? I mean, the price is just like stuck and it's low and it's what, what's going on behind the scenes? Yeah, so I think there's been a lot of speculation in the market, yeah, you know, obviously on the stock market, uh, the cryptocurrencies have been going through the roof. Uh, so each one of the investments just gets their turn. But I think in the gold market, with interest rates coming up just a tiny little bit, there's been a lot of playing around in the derivatives market uh, from some of the bigger players. Uh, on the break, uh, Robert had brought up, uh, you know, JP Morgan getting a huge fine because of the manipulation uh, in the markets there. It was billions of dollars worth of fines. Um, they look like they've been manipulating the market for quite some time. And I think there's a lot more of that out there, in my opinion, just with the paper markets over the physical market. Because if you look at the physical part of the market, which should really drive price, there's an enormous amount of demand on the physical side, where on the silver, you can't even barely get any. Right. Um, and, and the price is pulled back there also. But usually those start to work themselves out over the long term. So in the next six to nine months, you know, even Citigroup had come out and said, you know, they thought gold would be $2,500 an ounce, uh, you know, sometime by the end of the year. So I, I, I would kind of agree with that uh, prediction. And, and for years, like I said, I started in 1964 with silver. And I said, it's not how much per ounce, it's how many ounces do you have? Right. And today you can't even get the stuff. And this is what this what what Kim is talking about here is demand is at an all time high from the retail. Like we're retail, then there's the um, the professionals like um, Tesla, Sony, uh, Apple. They buy silver for production in industry, and there's retail guys like us who buy it from outside. But the problem is the price is manipulated. So here we have all time high demand. I can't even get the stuff the price is going down and, you know, people are going nuts. I mean, I call my, I call people up and I say, have you got any silver? They go, no, but the price is going down. So why is that Kevin? Well, again, you, you have the paper side of the market selling off the paper side and on the physical side that this paper should be backed by. Um, you can't get any. Um, at the beginning of the program, we talked about the uh, U S mint had shut down production of silver American eagles. They only have a few jobs to do, and that would be a big one, right? To produce silver American eagles and gold American eagles. And they've just discontinued the silver American eagle program, saying that it was a, a design change. In reality, I just don't believe they can get the silver at all. Um, silver's forecast is much, much better, in my opinion, than the gold, because the Biden administration, uh, is looking at implementing a two trillion dollar you know climate program or right. green energy, and uh, if you look in nineteen or uh, uh, two thousand and nineteen, uh, solar panels used about a hundred million ounces of silver that year. I don't have two thousand and twenty uh, numbers yet, but a hundred million ounces in two thousand and twenty. If they're going to add, which is about two and a half billion dollars, by the way. If they're going to add $2 trillion to that, and some of that's going to find its way into solar, then I think silver is going to get much, much more difficult to get over the next 24 to 36 months than where we are today. 
And Kevin, when you say the U.S. Mint cannot get silver, is it a mining issue or is there not enough silver to be mined? How come they can't? How come the government cannot get it? Well, over the past uh, nine months or so, you've seen here in the United States and even around the world, just an enormous amount of investor demand for physical silver. At the same time, you had a lot of the mines shutting down uh, or working half shifts because of the pandemic. So you had this perfect storm happening where the physical supply wasn't coming out of the ground. But the demand side of it, when you look into the future, is much greater than what the supply side can can get to market anyway. Well, that's uh, the whole point is I think they've sold it. It's not there. Well, yeah. So some of these mines pre-sell their silver production through a futures contract. Uh, so they know the price that they can sell it for when they pull it out of the ground. So a lot of it has already been spoken for. I don't know how you're going to include this $2 trillion and how much of it's going to go into solar, but a decent amount of it will because it's one of the most popular green energy products out there. So, uh, you know, if we went to 200 million ounces, about $5 billion worth of additional demand, not counting investor demand and other in industrial demand, uh, the price of silver should be much, much higher than where we are today. Right. And I think we, at Richdown, we don't make recommendations. You know, we live, we're an education company. We buy what you want to buy, sell what you want to sell. But the reason why they have Kevin on here is this, if you're buying an ETF or you're buying silver, that, that what's happening now is if you can't find physical silver, you have to buy into the future. I mean, I have to take delivery in July sometimes where before I get it instantaneously. And the reason Lair Capital is important, I'm not endorsed, I think I'm not endorsed because you got to do your due diligence. But if you want to buy physical silver, can you buy it today for delivery from Lair Capital in the future? Yes, we, we try to deliver all of our silver within 28 days. I mean, that's, that's our goal is getting it to the customer within 28 days. So when would a person buy paper silver or paper gold in ETF? Uh, you know, if you, if, if you purchase silver and it's extremely heavy, you know, purchase as much of the physical silver as you, you, you possibly can. Uh, if you don't want to put it in a depository and you feel more comfortable calling up your stockbroker and saying, hey, I want to buy more silver through an exchange traded fund. Really, what you're doing is just uh, betting on the price of silver. There, there's nothing backing it or there is something backing it, but not 100 uh, percent of all of your money is going to be backed by the physical silver. So you're really just I believe silver is going to go up and I want to play uh, that out through an exchange traded fund. So if the silver runs out, they're just going to give you dollars back. They're not going to give you silver. Well, correct. They couldn't give you silver today. I, I, I think right. if the, all the exchange traded uh, funds uh, wanted to pay out physical silver, I don't think that is possible. Right. So I want to give uh, uh, Kevin opportunity to plug Larry Capital because I've been working with you guys for eight years now. He made me a famous man with my blue glasses. <laughs> and every, every every night on Fox, I guess I get sick and tired of seeing myself on that thing. I go, here I am again, you know? But I'm, I'm worse than my pillow. I'm, I'm, selling, I'm selling my pillow <laughs> and I'm selling silver, you know? And other guys are selling gold. Hey, you're my a better pillow. looking guy than the my pillow guy though. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, you know, but anyway, how does somebody deal with uh Lair Capital. How many different ways are there? How many ways can they access you, get information? Because you guys, you guys offer a lot of information, which is why I support you guys. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we, I wanted to do something special for you today, and I'm glad you were talking about this, uh, this dime. So uh, we've got a whole information package that we send out to people. It's completely free of charge. They can look at, you know, gold, silver, platinum, palladium, and all their options in there. Uh, speak to a personal representative so that they can uh, ask questions and get, get their uh, questions answered. And um, then we have a couple of special reports, one on silver, one on gold, uh, that we just are releasing uh, here in the next couple of days. And I would love to offer that to your customers free of charge. But I found about 75 uh, silver mercury dimes. They were minted from 1916 to 1945. They look great. I'll put them aside for you because I knew I was going to do this program and any caller who calls is going to get one of these uh, silver mercury dimes up to the 75th person. Oh, that's generous of you. That's generous. That's, that's an antique. That's an antique. 
It's, it's, it's a call it numismatic in the business, you know. And, and Kevin, right. what, what number do they call? Sure. If they give us a call at 1 800 511 1960, 800 511 1960, we'll get all the information and the Mercury Dime out. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna call that number. <laughs> I want a Mercury dime. You bet. <laughs> Pre sixty four. That's right. So anyway, and, and so, if for the words of wisdom, I mean, all the years you've been behind the scenes, so like you know, Kim and I just buy and we st- we store we store it, we don't sell it, we don't move it. So any advice for people who are newbies coming into the market for the first time or want to get more education? What what do they need to know? that only a person like you would know? You know, I, I, I think it's think longer term. You know, you've brought up, I purchased, uh, started purchasing gold before it was, it was legal, uh, you know, back in the war. And, you know, gold was trading at $35 an ounce and here we are at $1,700 an ounce. Um, the silver market has gone up tremendously. It's all time high is $47 an ounce. I think people have become so... Uh, enamored in making money overnight, like game stock and the cryptocurrencies. Just take it more slowly with your physical precious metals. Just start accumulating, accumulate over long periods of time. You look back, um, it's amazing how much wealth you can accumulate uh, when they're pumping up this much, you know, dollars into the economy and this much debt. Uh, I think taking it slow and thinking long-term are, are my best pieces of advice. And, and your longer term with your expertise, what, where do you see the price of gold and silver going? You know, uh, I think in the next three years, the, the gold price could be around $3,200 to $3,500 an ounce, just based on the amount of money that's been printed. Um, the silver price is much more exciting. I would say that, you know, we're at 25, we could easily get back up to 47. We've already been there with less debt and less money floating around. Um, so I, I'll, I'll keep it at 50. I think it can go higher than that, but I, I'd like to think that in the next three years, we can get to 50. Yeah, my number is 100, you know, just because I remember when gold, when silver hit 50 and then it dropped right back down when the Hunt brothers tried to corner the market and I've been waiting for 50, it touched it lightly, but I think, you know, the demand is just so high because of the Green New Deal. Because, oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, the demand, gold is not really used, it's not an industrial. But silver is not only a money or a currency, but it's also industrial. And, and the right. supplies are down. The supplies, supplies are down. down. Very expensive to start a mine and try to find more silver. There's not a lot of silver reserves out there. It's an incredibly intensive, capital intensive business. So it's not, you're not just going to go out and open up a mine and it's going to be up and running in six months. Usually those are three to five year projects. So there's not going to be a lot of additional silver coming on the market. Well, you're talking to two people who started two mines. Kim and I started a silver mine in Argentina and a gold mine in China. We don't have them anymore. <laughs> the Chinese government has one of them. <laughs> yeah, I bet they do. Every time China says they have a lot of gold, it's, yeah, it's my gold. You son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. But I got to tell you, too, our very first house we bought, our very first personal residence we bought, um, we didn't have any, our businesses were just starting. So we didn't have cash. And all of a sudden the broker calls and says, okay, the deal's done. We've got it done and we need to close uh, tomorrow. And they needed like $20,000. And I'm like, we don't have $20,000. How are we going to make this happen? So <laughs> we save gold and silver. Because we always save gold and silver. So I opened up the, our bedroom closet door and there in the back, all stacked neatly were all these silver bars. And so I, I put them in brown grocery bags and walked them through the streets of La Jolla to the precious metals dealer and cashed them in. <laughs> and that's, right. how we, that's how we bought our first house. Thank God for silver. Yeah. There's a lot of those stories <laughs> out there. I got to tell you, you know, and that's the long-term, you know, part of it, but put right. it away for your rainy day. And, you know, you feel pretty good about it when, when you have it, when you need it. Right. So once again, I'll go back to Gresham's law, bad money drives out good money. And the reason we're in financial trouble today is because without financial education, people have no idea what Gresham's law means. And Gresham's law brought to power people like Adolf Hitler and Stalin and those guys because of fake money. So the reason Kim and I, for all these years, we don't save dollars, we save gold and silver. And now we, ha- we do have some Bitcoin because <laughs> when COVID hit, I thought, oh, hallelujah, brother. You know, So we bought Bitcoin at very low prices but we stopped. 
But we always save gold and silver because it's just what Kim says, it's called liquidity. We can, liquidity means there's somebody always out there who wants to buy it. Is that correct, Kevin? Yeah, that's right. Would yeah. you buy it? Would you buy it back? Absolutely. Yes. We've always purchased everything that we've sold. And the other great part of that piece of news is if you take a stock here in the United States and go over to China, they may or may not purchase that particular stock. But if you take an ounce of gold anywhere in the world, it's worth the same price anywhere you go. So uh, that's a great store of value and a lot of liquidity. Right. Anyway, Kevin, you know, they really thank, thank you very, very much. And again, you know, please go to Lair Capital, check out what they offer. If you can get your hands on a real, real pre-64 <laughs> dime, keep it forever because it'll it's God's money. Gold and silver are God's money. Bitcoin is people's money. And we're just saying screw you to the U.S. government. <laughs> That's all we're doing for printing fake money. Anyway, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, thank Kevin. You. Appreciate it. Thank you very work. much. We'll be right back. We'll, we'll summarize what we said. Kevin, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you guys Kevin. Have a great day. You Bye. too. Enjoy. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Day Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. I want to thank again our guest today, Kevin Demerit of Lair Capital. He's made me a famous man. And uh, please check out what their offers are. You can listen to the Rich Day Radio program anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, and leave a review. And all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. We archive them because we're purely educational. We make no recommendations to buy or sell gold, silver, or ETFs. But you want to listen to this program again because you'll learn more. But more importantly, if you have friends, family, and business associates who are still working for money, you should listen to this program. Because as we, I said in Rich Dad Porter, the rich don't work for money, work for assets. We save gold, silver, and now Bitcoin. And that's what we do. A house is not an asset. Everybody's buying houses right now because the prices are going up. And it's a very dangerous time. So this is really time to get educated, listen to this program again, discuss with your friends, family, and business associates. What do you think, Kim? Uh, yeah, what I love about Kevin and, and the website is Lear, L-E-A-R, learcapital.com, is they're education-based. They want you right. to get educated. They're not just there to sell you something. And uh, I like what he said about silver. I mean, silver, the price is so suppressed right now, but they're talking about you know going solar and all of these different green energies, and they use silver. And right now, people cannot get silver, so oh, no. it's that price has to go up. He said, not, you know, nine to twelve months, that price is going to come up. Um, but I and and you've been saying this for ages that silver is really the play over gold because oh, of the God. usage of it. Yeah. Um, and it hasn't been. It's tough to, as we know, it's tough to start a silver mine. <laughs> we were up in Park City yes, a couple of days ago. Park City was founded because it was a silver mine. That's right. And now they're all tapped out. I mean, you can't even go in the mine anymore. But anyway, Sarah, what did you think of the? What did you think of Kevin? Kevin was great. I love that we had somebody um, who does this for a living, uh, deals with gold and silver for a living. I thought that he offered an interesting perspective. The one thing that I learned um, and probably took away from this show the most was the ETFs versus physical aspect, um, and how the derivative. You know, there's so many derivatives on one piece of silver. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, yeah. he said, and he said that. Uh, it, in the on the on the ETF certificate, it says you can take in kind. So you're not going to get the silver, but you might get another share of stock because an ETF is just a share of stock. Paper, right. and that's Gresham's law: bad money drives out good money. And that's why all you guys out there with ETFs and SLVs and GLDs and all that, I'm not saying don't buy that, but you're a loser because you don't know what you're buying. At least understand what you're buying. So Kim and I have no ETFs. We're not saying you don't have an ETF, but understand what you're buying. So that's the reason we, we love Kevin with Kevin. We love Larry Capital because they're an education company, but they're into the real stuff, not the fake stuff. And so we're an education company. Make your choice. You can buy fake from your local stockbroker. And thank you for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Program. And thank you, Kevin Demerit. Appreciate your education. Appreciate you getting people educated about gold and silver.